The first time I ever encountered the perfect disaster was in October 1985 when the rather wonderful guitar player Danny Cross achieved the dubious distinction of being the first and only person ever to be thrown out of the Jazz Butcher dressing room after an incident with the Rain Parade sandwiches. A lot of water under the bridge since then, four years gone by, and finally the world seems to be taking notice of their rather marvellous music. So while we were in Brighton, it seemed as good a time as any to uh, check out Philip Parfit, who writes the words, and Joe Wiggs, who plays bass and writes some of the music, and uh, see how they felt about what was happening right now. Just recently, with the good press we've had, and released a second album on fire, which is actually our third album, you know, things have taken a turn for the up, really. Um, a lot of people are just beginning to notice it. You got any idea why that should be suddenly now? Perseverance. Belief in what you're doing. Um, and the fact that we were in the wrong place at the wrong time. But now it, it seems that the time is a little bit more gunning for us. So you reckon that like the world is catching up with what you've been doing? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I think generally about it. Yeah. I think that what we're doing now isn't a million miles away from what we were doing three or four years ago. The lineup has changed, obviously, but we've still been doing the same, more or less the same type of material for about three years, you know. <laughs> I'm always looking to improve what I'm writing about. Not the things I'm writing about, but the way I apply myself to them. But to be honest, you know, I don't really see that many great writers about, you know. I, I don't know if pe people's attitudes are, are right. You know, there seems to be a certain amount of concentration on, on bands from America at the moment seem to be getting a lot of press. And I think that, you know, there are a few good bands in there, but. I, I think that the reason they're getting it is because nothing really is happening here, you know. I don't think there's that many bands doing it. I don't think the House of Love are doing it, you know. No. And if that's what's like, if they're the champions of indie lands, I don't want it, you know. They've to, they don't want it, and neither do we, you know. Do you find it irritating? I mean, it's always seemed to me that being independent is essentially a way of doing business. But it seems to me a lot of people almost deliberately ghettoise themselves and there's this kind of dumb idea that if you're an indie band you have to sound like one of about three currently sort of media focused bands you know yeah but i mean who wants to be that you know if you've got your head screwed on you don't want to be that and this week's thing is like next week last week's thing you know who wants to be that right. all those people i think are just going to disappear up a small dark hole somewhere you know <laughs> <laughs> I really do. No one wants, if they've got their head screwed on, they just don't want to be labelled as an indie band forever. You know, we think that there's a big audience out there who want, who could listen to our music. We're, we're getting on all right with Fire. They're, they've been good to us so far, you know, and they're putting themselves behind us, and that's really good. But so many bands think that they're going to have something by staying indie, but then there's just as many bands who think that the be-all and end-all of everything is to get onto a major a lot of these bands disappear just as quickly as soon as a major gets their hands on them anyway. So they've, they've become a small fish in a big pond instead yeah. of being a big fish in a small pond. So, sure. you know, you've got, it can be done, but you've got to do it right, you know. I rather suspect the perfect disaster aren't doing this for the money, but <laughs> should the opportunity come along and the appropriate major turn up, I mean, is it something you're really looking for? Or, you, you know, if it happens and it happens all well and good? Well, it'd be nice to have enough money to pay the rent. Sure. I mean, you know, we think that we deserve to be at least able to afford to live. You know, we're not talking about that we want to live comfortably. I mean, who doesn't? You know, of course we do. We're not sort of saying that we deserve millions or anything like that, but if anyone else does, we do too, you know? Sure. There's a hell of a lot of people who are sort of raking in loads of money and they're not sort of doing anything I mean, that's the thing really is, worth hearing. As you mentioned a minute ago about the fact that we have kind of struggled through the ranks, as it were, gives us the potential to have 
a longer life than a lot of bands who kind of get instant success. This thing about signing to a major is a similar kind of thing. I mean, if we were offered a lot of money on terms that we thought ena would enable us to progress in the way that we want to progress, then sure we'd say, yeah. But there's no point in having a lot of money if you're then tying yourself up in such a way that you're not able to, pro to progress in a long-term sort of way. So, you know. Right, it's like what you say about disappearing. Yeah. The scars syndrome. We're doing it, you know, we're really doing it just because we love what we're doing. It's the music that comes first and, you know, we've worked hard, so sure, we deserve a bit, little bit of money, yeah. yeah. We're not asking for the moon, although it would be quite nice. Don't Why know. ask for the moon when you have the stars? Yeah, but you don't actually have them, do you? <laughs> Everyone has them. Exactly. But I want them all for me. <laughs> so or at least one. It'd be nice to own a star, I guess. The most extreme case of privatisation I've ever come across. I wouldn't have believed it of you, Phil. That's what happens. This is what happens <clears throat> when you turn into a megalomaniac. Time stands still. Time for a pill. Time to sit tight till the time is just right. Time to turn on. Time to kill. Time to eat.